Good afternoon, this is Schweitzer, and we're going to look at a little video here on what is the difference between Q and K. Build a pen here. What is Q? What is K? And this is the start of typically our second quiz material for equilibrium section in AP Chemistry. Okay, so what I, I kind of look at it like this. I have this a little table that I constantly use for reactants, products, like a little diol concentration at each. And I note that, you know, if we're product favorite, we'd end up over here. That's my K. So if it's a K is equal to the uh, concentrations of products over the concentrations of reactants, then via the algorithm, okay, now let's say, for example, this algorithm is going to be a little bit different. It's located right here. So if we have um, lots, we have this certain amount of product to, to reference ratio that's going to end up, then, uh, then that's where I'm going to end up, regardless, for a given temperature. I could, however, have, you know, lots, uh, in this case, I could end up having a whole bunch of product. Maybe I have only half product. So I have a beaker that only contains C, for example. Well, then I have to work my way back this way to gain some reactant to get to my um, ending point. Or I could start with a, just a whole bunch of um, reactants and then I gotta work my way this way to get back to my end point. Sometimes uh, you know I drive bus every now and then and, and I kinda just sometimes relate to kids that if I if I you know here's HHS and if their house is located right here Okay, typically you'd want to drive them you know, to their house. We have New London over here. We got Appleton over here. And uh, I'm driving those around. If I dropped off a kid over here that's supposed to go here, they're just going to start moving this way. And if I drop them off in New London, okay, when well, they just start, they're going to start going this way. Um, in the end, we always get to the same spot. They're going to get home. Uh, so, that being said, I typically look at where you are as Q. All right, and we're going to is K. So this is Q, this is Q, and this is the K. Same algorithm. Algorithm meaning that we're going to use the same exact form, you know, method or process to get to the endpoint. It's just a matter of um, where you are versus where are you home yet. Um, so let's look at this. So the algorithm for that guy would be. Um, this guy here, okay, right there. Um, here's the expression. So if I use initial values in here, then I am just going to get what I call a Q value. Concentration of C, concentration of A, concentration of B. You know, if, I, if I get use the initial stuff in there, then I would be using the same algorithm. It just tells me where I am. If I put the ending concentrations in there, then I get my K value, and I use this guy. So it's the same exact algorithm, it's just what you're plugging into it. So let's take a moment and just kind of see how it's calculate Q. All right, so uh, in this case, I just put numbers in. I got one, two, I got two A's, I have three B's, all right, and I have zero C's. Uh, zero C's. So technically at this point, it would be using this algorithm is going to be zero over two times three, which would be zero over six, which basically is zero. Or you might say infinitely small. Infinitely small. So I have to move to the right no matter what. I am going to go this way. Um, I'm essentially buried right here, and I'm going to go this way. At the end, I have two, all right, uh, two of these, I have one of these, and I have uh, one of these. And hopefully, I followed the stoic ratio in this, and it looks like I didn't. This would be impossible. I think maybe someone's even mentioned this to me before. I wouldn't be able to, if I lose... If I lose two of these, I have to lose two of those. So my, nor my ratios here. 
In the end, though, I would have uh, 1 over 2 times 1, and therefore uh, it would be 1 over 2 would be 1 half. That's my k value. These are super common in, like this, really super common in multiple choice areas, which is some simple math multiplying and dividing. Sorry about the translation there. Maybe I'll fix it. All right, so we got a beaker here. In the beaker, A, B, and C are, are added to the beaker um, and forming the following concentrations. Calculate, and the KC is this guy. Calculate Q. All right, so first thing we do is we gather our equation and write the expression. I just write K always. I know that it's going to change depending on what I put in there. C, A, and B. And my initial concentrations are these guys. So C is 0.1 over 0.3 and 0.3. This is 0.1 over 0.9, uh, which should just basically be 1 ninth. Right? Um, of course, you can calculate 1 ninth out. 1 divided by 9 is 0 0.11111. Right? 0 0.111 with 3 sig figs equals my Q value. This is where I am, this is where I'm going to get to, 10. So is Q smaller, bigger, or the same as K? This is a, this is a really important piece. We want to know reactants, products, and I'm going to 10, but I'm at 0.11. So I need to go this way in order to get to 10. That's what the reaction is going to do. Just give it time. These things are fighting back and forth, kind of rations, it's going to go in this way, it's going to go in that way, but eventually the ratios here will equal 10. So when I go to the right, it's a ratio of product over reactant. I'm going to have to lose reactant and gain product via the stoic ratio, which is what my picture on the last slide really wasn't very good at. So in this case, Q is less than K. As the reaction proceeds, eventually it will shift. I would just say it shift to the right. When I say shift to the right, it means my reactants will go down. My products will go up okay. until I reach the value of 10. All right. Q, I uh, should say, is another typical question for Q versus K. Go ahead. Give it a try. All right. This, for the system, reaction above, O2 and O3, it's got a really small K value. Initially, it is uh, 0.15 and 2.5 moles per liter, respectively. Which of the following best predicts the system as it occurs at 570? So, what I'm going to do is I got to, okay, my K value equals concentration of the O3 squared, concentration of the O2 cubed. And it says that the O2 is, uh, this guy is 0 0.15, 0 0.15 cubed. And this guy is going to be uh, 2.5, 2.5, and it is going to be squared. So a couple things I might note here. One, look at this, this K value. It means I'm driving immensely in this direction. I could calculate this, but you should keep, else keep in mind, on the mobile choice section, there is no calculator. And that might be a little tougher to do without a calculator. I do, however, know that this is going to be fairly large. The numerator will be larger than the denominator. It's going to be greater than 1. And look at that K value. So this means my, my Q value is, is bigger. Not only is it bigger, it's way bigger than my K value. So um, Q is bigger than K. Q, Q, we're down to these two. All right. Um, so I will lose this, and I'm going to gain that value. The amount of O3 will increase. No, we're shifting that way. So it's got to be this guy right here. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. Um, here's another example, and I have two of them here, and I don't, let's do one of them. This is a really common example of where we use Q and K in solubility type reactions okay 
So first thing you want to do is going to take a little bit of time here. We got plenty of time here. So um, I got P, B, N, O, three, uh, parentheses two, plus N, A, S, O, four, two there. Uh, goes to P, B, C, L, two. Oh, sorry, not C, L. plus NaNO3. And they want to know will it precipitate occur. Nowadays, they're even going to tell you that what's going to precipitate. They say that that's a memorization deal, which they don't want you to do. So they'll say when solid PBS over precipitates. Um, okay, so that means that they want to know if I dump all of these chemicals into this particular beaker, Will we get enough concentrations to exceed uh, enough uh, uh, to exceed the K value, which means we're overly saturated? So with this, this is just I mean really a super common question. I would say this shows up every other year. So my actual reaction I'm looking for is lead sulfate on the bottom PbSO4 entering and exiting. That's what I want to go to. So it's kind of difficult to go from this to this. PbSO4 goes to, comes from Pb2 plus plus SO4 minus 2. And my Ksp um, expression equals the concentration of Pb2 plus times the concentration of SO4 minus 2. Okay, um, and now I want to know what are these concentrations. I know that whatever these concentrations happen to be, they if they exceed this guy, then I'm holding too much. Like I'm not going to be able to hold anything more than than what's equals to this guy. We call it, so we call it solubility product. I can have a whole ton of the lead and just a squeak of the sulfate. That's fine. Do I get over the top of this or not? Or I could have a lot of, of the sulfate and just a squeak of this stuff and I can get over. It just depends on what I got. Okay. Um, so what do I have? And this is the part where we're going to be able to show this problem. And it's the same every time. Okay. So I'm going to erase this here. Give myself a little more room. I should have just went down below because I have infinite room down below. Uh, but uh, there we go. Keep it all on one page here. So what do I got to do? I got to figure out these concentrations. Now we're going to rely on something we did in states of matter. I got 10 milliliter, or, well, not 10 milliliters, 1, 2, 100 milliliters, 0.1 liters of this stuff, and I have 40 milliliters of this stuff. So I want to know what is my lead ion concentration and what is my sulfate ion concentration. And I'm going to use M. 1v1 equals m2v2. I'm keenly aware that I got 0.1 and 0.4, so I can't, I can't really do that in my head, I don't think. So my initial concentration of lead is going to be 8.8 e negative third, so 8 e to the negative third times my volume, which is 0.1, equals my ending concentration, which is what I want, times my ending volume, which is 0.5. So I'm mixing these two things together, and you'll find that I'm adding two volumes. So I'm going from 0.1 and 0.4. I'm increasing my volume to 0.5 liters. And this is something we did during the solutions chapter, intentionally, to get us ready for this. I'm diluting it. So now, what do I got? So let's put the math together here. Multiply those, divide the 0.5 out. 8 e to the negative third times 0.1 divided by 0.5. And I get this guy, the PB, PB2 plus is going to be 0 0.0016. Okay, let's do the other one. Just pause this and try this one on your own first. All right, so the sulfate is going to be 5e to the negative third times 0 
equals m2 times 0.5. m2 equals, grab your calculator, 5 e to the negative third times 0.4 divided by 0.5 and 0 0.004. All right, 0, 0 0.004. You can add some zeros if you want some sig figs. And these are my two concentrations after I mix them. Now, will those two concentrations be enough to push me over the limit of the KSP? And because I'm not doing KSP, we now call this Q, which is why we're talking about it right now. So this is going to be 0 0.0016, 0 0.004. If there were any squares here, which they're not, I would square these. Use your same algorithm. Using this algorithm, what do I get? 0 0.004 times 0 0.0016 gives me 6.4, 6.4 e to the negative sixth. Now again, because the k correlates to solubility, okay, you could realize that, okay, how this correlates to solubility. My k value is, uh, needs to be provided for lead sulfate. So I'm going to Pause the video here, and I'll grab it. That would be provided for you, and I'll grab it for you, and you can have it. We're going to make this discussion. All right, so magically it appears. And, of course, this is something that in a college textbook, they would expect you to just look it up. You have a table. Go look it up. So because we're here on this page here, I, I provided it for you. Um, so now what do we got here? We got a situation where I have this guy versus this one right here. I'll grab my pen again, hopefully. All right, so with that being said, because this is negative six, this is negative seven, the Q value is bigger than my K, and therefore I'm, these, I'm holding too much stuff. So will I precipitate? Yes, I will precipitate, okay? Q is too large. These problems, historically, you have a point for this, a point for this. That's all you really gotta say. And there's going to be a point for this. So three points. One for generating your concentrations. They likely will have a point also for calculating your Q value. All right? And then a point. So there's one, two, three, four points here. Okay. Uh, the next one is identical. You just need to run it through and try it out. Different things. Got a different K value. Try it out. See what you can come up with. Okay. And I'm going to stop there for this video. Thank you.